Hello, and welcome to the SCP Versus series. Today we've got a weird one. We've been following a D-Class as he makes his way through a Foundation site, experiencing a containment breach. He's already escaped 173, some unidentified knife-legged monster, and SCP-049. I put out a poll after the last video asking you who you thought he should go up against next, and you chose the butt ghost. Not quite as overwhelmingly as you usually do, but still pretty decisively. One thing to note, as I said last time, he's not always going to be just facing the SCPs you choose. There will be other objects involved, but I assure you the resolution of the story will only involve the things you choose by poll. So let's see who wins this one. A man in an orange jumpsuit and a man wearing a white lab coat rounded the corner at full speed and bounced off the wall. They recovered immediately and then took off down a long darkened hallway. Just behind them was a two or three year old child. The child was tottering towards them but despite its gait, it seemed to glide just above the floor while it walked, and it was gaining on them somehow. The two men made it to a door just before the child would have caught up to them. The man in the lab coat turned as they went through and passed a keycard over the door's access sensor. It turned red, and the door slid shut behind them with a loud clank. The dull sound of a fist impacting on metal followed, and then it rang out again and then again. The two men stopped and looked at each other. I'm Dr. Jacobs, the man in the white lab coat said between gulps for air. I'm, I'm Jeffrey Winters, D9341. Why did you tell me to run? Dr. Jacobs chuckled a little and wiped the sweat from his forehead. We're in the middle of a containment breach and a two-year-old asks for help to find its mom. What did you think that meant? Winters nodded back. Fair enough. The door was beginning to show visible dents from the impacts. Dr. Jacobs cocked an eyebrow. That door is like five inches of steel, if... They both looked over at the door as it buckled slightly in the middle, accompanied by another large impact. The hallway they stood in now was even longer than last, with a number of doors leading to side rooms. The red glow of the emergency lights barely illuminated it, and Winters couldn't see all the way to the end but the door buckled again, this time a small gap appearing in the upper left corner as the force pushed the metal out of shape. Winters looked at the doctor for guidance. So, what now? The doctor shrugged again. It, it's probably not very good at tracking, since it tries to lure the prey in, so we could keep running. Winters knew he probably could go on for a bit longer, but that doctor was beat red in the face and still wheezing. Maybe we should try to hide. The doctor nodded and they moved down the hall. As they passed by doors, Jacob tried his access card on each of them, but none of them would open. That card doesn't seem to be very useful, Winter said. Jacobs laughed. It gives me general access in a few rooms related to my project. These are probably for other projects. We just need to find one that's... The doctor trailed off as he saw the sign directing them to the unisex restroom. Winters looked at the doctor and pursed his lips. Better than nothing? Yeah. They ducked into the restroom and stopped to listen. The clang was further away, but definitely getting louder every time the door was hit, and each hit was also accompanied by the tearing of metal now. The restroom had a single red emergency light above the door, three stalls, two urinals, and a single sink. The floor was made up of small raised tiles that, in the dim red light, looked like they might be clean, though it was pretty dark in here. The sound of tearing metal was getting more and more intense. And then there was silence, and the two men's breathing slowed more and more as they heard small footsteps outside the restroom. The slow drip from one of the faucets was accompanied by a slight buzzing from the emergency light in the silence. The two men looked at each other with wide eyes, as they heard a child's voice speak from the hallway. Mom? Winters backed away from the door slowly. I want to go home, Mom. The doctor moved away from the door as well, 
slowly backing up against the back wall. Winters continued against the wall until he bumped into the hand dryer. He almost wouldn't have noticed it at all until a motion sensor activated and it suddenly began loudly blowing air. Winters acted immediately and ran into one of the stalls, closing the door and climbing on a toilet to stand. The doctor, however, was slower to react as the door splintered inward. Mom? I'm scared. Dr. Jacobs let out a wheezing yelp, and then he said, No, 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 fuck! Before the sound of ripping cloth and flesh filled the room. The snapping of bone and the slosh of blood as it flowed out onto the floor kept up for almost a minute, along with the screaming, somehow. But it finally cut off, after what seemed like an eternity, with a gurgle and the sound of messy eating continued on for several minutes. When it was over, the tottering child left the bathroom. Winters had spent the entire time trying not to shit himself. Appropriate though the venue might have been for such an activity, the need to be quiet had took precedence. After waiting for a few more minutes, he finally climbed down from the toilet and sat down to recover. I'm gonna eat your butt. Winters stopped. This was a different voice. Not coming from outside the hall. In fact, it didn't sound like it was coming from anywhere, actually. It was echoing around inside his head. He whispered back. Who, you know, what are you? I'm the butt ghost. Gonna eat your butt. Nom nom. There was a long, long pause. What? But ghost. Wait, you're... Hold on. You're a ghost that is also a butt, or... No. Ghost butt is my brother. I'm the butt ghost. I haunt butts and eat butts. I'm gonna eat your butt. Why are you... Why, why would you want to eat my butt? Because I'm the butt ghost. The toilet was getting bigger, or... Maybe he was getting smaller, or wait, was his butt getting smaller? It didn't really matter. Try as he might, he couldn't get up or get out. Winters didn't even get a chance to make a noise beyond a small splash as he was pulled in. It ate his butt, and then it ate the rest of him. The Foundation listed him as officially missing in action when the breach was over, and no one thought much of it, because... That happens all the time, until the butt ghost was recontained, and it spoke of the butt in the orange jumpsuit. They put a cause to his death, finally. The official record was corrected. Jeffrey Winters, eaten by the butt ghost. The man filling out the form tried not to laugh. Okay, so that happened. It was about time Mr. Winters finally met his maker, I suppose. Well... Actually, I guess, technically, his maker wasn't the butt ghost. But he's definitely dead because, you know, it, it ate his butt. Look, you guys chose this, not me. I'm just interpreting your wishes. I don't really have anything planned for two weeks from now. So, if you guys have any contests you'd like to see, let me know. It doesn't have to be to the death, by the way. So, if you want to see two, like, animal SCPs having a drinking contest, that'd be a perfectly valid choice. It's, the sky's the limit. Just suggest two things in a type of contest in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed the video, definitely hit the subscribe button, and then hit the notification bell next to that so you're always alerted when I upload new content. And if you want to make sure more content like this gets made, join my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash dsumerian, like all the fine folk on the page you see right now have. And by the way, a special thanks to my newest $10 patron. Dr. Bastian Trasylvania. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. All of your donations make sure I can continue to create videos for you guys, so I appreciate it more than you can imagine. Anyway, that's all for now. I'll see you on Tuesday.